Hi, I'm Nate, and watching Photo Learningism. Thank you so much to everybody who voted in the recent YouTube poll to figure out where you needed help when you're working on your pictures. Overwhelmingly, that was making color adjustments, so let's do that. Once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time here looking at this content and looking at me, <laughs> I do a lot of work on this channel to uh, build a community of learners to surface the cheap or free art technology so that you can know about them and make good use of them. So again, reaching back to that YouTube poll, I was trying to figure out just where we might need help you know where do we need greater understanding and i asked the question about when we're working on our pictures and our photos and things where do you need the most help and the overwhelming vote was when you're making color adjustments so i figured that why not start there i am with actually calibrating your screen because if that's not right or if it's not in a reasonably good place then working in these tools really doesn't matter. So let's start with that. <laughs> so there's a couple different ways to tackle this. I'm in Windows 10 right now, in case that's not obvious by my backdrop here and the buttons and things. Uh, there's a different approach for Linux and I'll get into that. For Windows, there is a purely software driven approach um, that can get you some of the way <laughs> towards correction. Um, so we'll step through that. It actually includes a, a tool with Windows 10 to help you calibrate your screen and, and get you closer. It's not going to be perfection uh, because there's a tool called a, a kilometer, if I'm saying that correctly, color, eye, meter, kilometer, <laughs> um, that is specifically designed. It's a device, a physical device that clamps onto your screen. It reads the wavelength of color and it translates that into adjustments when you're going to do this calibration process. So what I'm going to show you is is kind of a by eye process. It's not going to be perfect, but it can make it somewhat better uh, to get you closer to what you need. And then if that's really important to you, the color values, then you may want to consider looking into one of those devices. There's there's many out there in the market, um, but um, this is just kind of a first step uh, for the here and now, and it's free. It comes included with the operating system. So let's look at that. To get to it, you have to hop to settings and then system. Now I'm gonna work on this bigger screen here just so you can get a sense of how this fits together. I'm gonna to hop down here to advanced display settings. And by the way, there are some settings in here already that will become important like the overall brightness. Um, there are some adjustments on this external screen which I could also tweak, but coming at it from the graphics card perspective, there is a brightness control already here that you would want to work with the fats a factor in your adjustments. So advanced, we're gonna hop into the display adapter properties. There's a lot of hops here, by the way. <laughs> color management, color management again, advanced. And finally, we get to this really deeply hidden tool of calibrate display. <laughs> so here we are. So. This is just kind of the intro screen. All we really need to do here is click next. A little bit more information. Uh, it's going to talk about some of the things that you'll see. Let's click next again. Okay, so this is an upfront guide. It kind of shows you what you should be looking for as you make adjustments. Read it carefully because there's no back button. That kind of bothers me, Microsoft, if you're watching, by the way. But there's no back. So take a good look at this. This is the range that you should aim to be as you, you make adjustments. And just to kind of briefly touch on gamma, it, it kind of attempts to explain it here, but really this is what's going on, is that you have the, the RGB, the red, green, and blue. Each of those color elements has a certain amount of power, okay? And gamma pertains to the adjustment of that power to make it more or less brilliant, more or less strong. It's We're working with luminescence here. So that's that's what we're adjusting, is that the power of those colors, the, the red, the green, and blue, and that's how you can think of it. It is compensating for the differences that your monitor is attempting to do uh, in stretching those colors 
to kind of translate the color that it's interpreting and it doesn't always get it right. So the gamma is the power adjustment to make it more correct. <laughs> so I'm gonna attempt to kind of find a happy place here because they gave you a, a thing of what it should be. And I can see that the adjustment is not really coming through in my capture. So you don't have to take my word for it that it looks uh, the way that it kind of should from the guide. <laughs> All right, you can skip this part um, if you want to, but um, again, I showed you where the brightness was from the, the other panel. That's where you do that. Uh, contrast is really purely looking at a balance between the darkest parts and the brightest parts. <laughs> so that's what contrast is, and that's where you'd set that kind of happy medium for the way it should look, um, and that's how it goes. They give you kind of a brief guide of what they recommend, where you get not over, you know, not, not leading towards overexposed, not underexposed, but you know, that happy medium where you can safely discern all the details and they're showing a black on black, which is kind of a clever way to distinct this so you can make sure you see the full range of uh, what's coming through. So that's that. This, there's actually no adjustment. They want you to make those tweaks on your own, which is again, an important reason for why you'd want to go back to the actual settings. And, and look at those things here. Um, I think it was a hop or two back um, here. So this is what they're alluding to with that. You kind of have to take a step outside the wizard again, not great, but they're at least guiding you through what you should be doing at this point <laughs> and giving you some uh, visual representation. All right, so as it is, I think this looks pretty good. We're gonna hop forward. All right, again, looking at contrast, and as I just explained, that is comparing the absolute black to the absolute white. Um, so using that as, as a middle ground that you're looking for, they give you the kind of the, the middle ground that you should aim to see. Click next, and again, contrast is gonna be an in-monitor setting in this case. Uh, I can't show you that because those are the buttons outside of what you can see here, um, but you have to adjust those, and those are, gonna, those are gonna be different per screen, per monitor, and all of that. So look for those in, in your monitor settings. Uh, to make adjustments there. And then here's where we actually start to get some control of it, uh, which is color balance. Uh, we're actually going to specifically tweak those red, green, and blue values because the monitor will fall out of sync. You, you, you would think that it's a piece of hardware. It should keep pace with itself. That's actually not the case. The screen is made up of elements that are emitting light and those components, those LEDs, um, depending on whether or not you have an OLED, you know, that those principles, the light emitting diode actually does lose strength the longer it's used. So you have to change the compensation of the value. Now I've seen varying reports of how frequently you should run this kind of process. There are some really zealous approaches to saying, oh, every day, every day. And I guess if color is really important to you, yeah, but that seems like a bit much just to get started every day. I think more of a realistic expectation is maybe once every two weeks, once a month, something in that range. Um, because if you let it go beyond that point, you'll start to see very subtle differences. And the older a screen is, you may have to do it more frequently, by the way, because again, those LEDs are gonna start to wear out the older they get. But again, up front, I wouldn't go crazy. All right, so my screen particularly seems to have kind of this weird overcompensation. I know it doesn't show so much from what you can see, but it has a lot of overcompensation for the red range. So I tweaked that down a little bit, and then to my eye, that looks way better, all right? You may have to adjust the other values, all right? You can compare what you had before if you wanted to against you know your current one. That's fine. There's also a secondary wizard, which I'm gonna uncheck. That's for working on the clarity of how fonts appear on your screen. Not really concerned with that right now. You're free to do that. If you like, I'm focusing really on the overall color presentation. Uh, so that's that. I click finish. You'll see the screen blip a little bit and you're done. All right. So that is the built-in tool. I could see a discernible difference. I was comparing my two screens here and I had noticed that there was a distinct a very obvious difference in the red values, which is why I made a tweak adjustment to that when I'm working on this one. There's a little bit of leech difference between green and blue, but it's it's almost it's almost negligible, and I don't want to tear my hair out trying to get that precise. It's close enough. <laughs> but 
And again, this is a way that you can do that. And you could do the same calibration on the other screen, by the way, if you wanna tweak them to be more in sync that way. I'm gonna, I'm just doing one of my screens right now. Um, and that's a way that you could uh, fix that problem for yourself if you're seeing that, all right? So I mentioned up front that I had checked into Linux in this. I'm not as averse, in, um, as well versed in Linux as I am Windows. Uh, it seems that specific to Linux, and I did a lot of searching and research. Uh, the approach there is very much on open source, or in some cases, paid tools. But a lot of tools that are that are free, regardless. But they all require that that kilometer, that color eye meter thing that I mentioned before. They don't seem to offer this kind of software approach, which in a way we're kind of guessing in large part, it does get us closer to where it would be, but it's by eye and that's a subjective thing. And the sensor is really attuned to the standards and the science behind where the color should actually be. So if, again, if, if color is important to you, I think Linux is just trying to make sure you're in that viewpoint um, for making color adjustments. And if I'm wrong there, absolutely say so. Point us to a tool because I could not find one that works this way in Linux. Um, they all depend on having that that sensor meter adjustment. Um, so if you know of one, absolutely share that in the comments uh, because that would be really helpful for those of you who are on Linux specifically. Um, I just I couldn't find something that offered this same kind of approach uh, in the kind of the short term uh, color correction for Linux. Um, it seems to be kind of purely a Windows viewpoint for now. Not sure why that is. <laughs> all right. So thank you for sticking with me this far. Um, I know we kind of went into the science a little bit things, which I think is interesting because it helps to understand what you're actually doing and therefore you have a better rounded view of how you should make adjustments rather than just comparing the, the images in front of you. But um, hopefully that's helpful. If it was helpful, please do consider giving me a thumbs up so I know that this was a good direction for you and help to answer what you voted for because that's important to me to know that it's speaking to the need. Uh, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome, awesome things that are become going to be coming up. I know this is kind of like the built-in stuff. This was not a new tool, but I'm trying to surface more information and knowledge so we can make what we already have and the tools we already know more effective. That was the goal of this video. So consider subscribing. Also, as I mentioned, leave a comment, leave a question, and not just for me, but for the whole community. I'm trying to bring us together so we can make each other stronger and grow in our experience of pursuing art. All right. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you at the next video.